Right, welcome. Uh, my name is Marcin Woźniak. I'm CEO of Optimum Pareto Foundation, Polish NGO with a mission of improving rational public discourse and its outcomes, especially decisions, not only institutional decisions, but uh, decisions on societal level. And um, our main way to do this is with um, software, uh, AI-assisted argumentation software called SwarmCheck. And with over 40 projects, um, based on that, I, I would like to share with you some uh, experiences and some methods we use that can be uh, used for alignment among humans and possibly for AI alignment. So with that, I would like to uh, maybe define alignment. Let's start with that. Uh, I would say that alignment is a state in which there are many actors that can pursue its goals without impeding on each other values. Right, so uh, in the case of uh, existential risk of, of AI, uh, killing all humanity would be impeding on our values very much. Right? So um, given that AI uh, poses this type of risk, um, we may ask ourselves a question. Can we envision ourselves, uh, me, me as a person, in this process of achieving the state of alignment? Because right now we don't have alignment on the humanity, scale on, on the global scale uh, and on the scale of, let's say, interspecies uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a connection between uh, human and AI. So um, we need to get there and can we envision ourselves as agent in this process, in this path? And so uh, I'll briefly um, speak about uh, uh, the outline of this presentation. I'll start with our experiences and some challenges we see in uh, human alignment at, at the beginning. And then I'll move to um, AI-assisted argumentation and how it helps with those processes. And then how we scale it up into AI alignment. So uh, what are the affirmation challenges? Let's start with sovereignty. Right? Are we uh, a subject in this process of achieving alignment? or an object, right? So do we have a say in it or is it something that will just happen to us or, or not happen to us because we are unable to, to affect some change? Um, what about just being wrong, having the wrong model, uh, the, the wrong uh, presumptions and that may us lead to, to some alignment but due to some, some crucial errors in our thinking uh, lead us astray? Another uh, issue that is quite connected with the previous one, is the value lock-in. So especially with AI, we can have this situation in which we just extrapolate certain set of values uh, that are undesirable in the, in the wrong, uh, long run. So for example, we, we wouldn't like to live in a world that is um, locked in values, for example, from 15th century. And the coordination or rather lack of it is a huge issue. Uh, I would say that the root of uh, many evils in, in our current society, the races to the bottom, uh, prisoner dilemma type of situations, um, those need to be addressed because without coordination, we don't really have an alignment. And scalability. Sometimes it is not that hard to achieve alignment in small groups, like in, in your family, with your friends, right? But how to scale up in societal, to, to the societal level? It's, it's quite challenging issue. So um, let's maybe think about what are the scenarios that can lead us there. So as I, as I say, um, th there are small instances that alignment can occur spontaneously in, in some small groups, for example. But I, I wouldn't say it's feasible to think that for a global scale, uh, it is something that is uh, realistic. So what are the other possibilities? Maybe uh, some authority will impose some policy, some dictator, some committee, right? Maybe we'll just move uh, this problem to, to the field of AI and just let AI do the homework for us. I would say the problem with this approach is what about uh, verifying the, the model of the authority that is deciding this policy, right? Uh, how can we be sure that they are not wrong? And um, you, what if they just drop the ball and just ignore the issue? Okay, so maybe somehow we can come up with a way to just vote on the, on the problem of alignment, right? But I would say that um, 
with this problem, we don't really, um, in, in current voting systems, we don't really have the outcomes that are, um, that makes many people happy. In uh, most elections, most of the people are un unhappy with the results. So uh, we are just averaging out something. We don't really have the best possible outcome um, that is. And for alignment, I think that that is the key issue that we really have to aim high for the best possible outcome. So uh, what I would, I would like to explore in more detail is rational public discourse. I wouldn't say that rational public discourse is something that we have at scale, but with our experiences, I can show you how it can be achieved uh, more locally and how this process can be scaled up. So um, fr from, uh, fr from this in introduction, I, I think I established that alignment is something that we have to actively pursue. We have to pursue it collectively and pursue it with critical thinking, reasoning and, and collective action. So maybe let's uh, think about what are the possible outcomes of collective action. So the first one is dysfunction. This is the worst one. Uh, with every uh, additional person, the, the problem gets worse. Traffic jam is an example of uh, dysfunction of, of collective performance. There is inhibition, so uh, we can only work as well as the weakest link in the group. So running up with your shoelaces tied up with, with a group, uh, you will ju just run as fast as the, the slowest person in the group. What about uh, averaging? As I mentioned before, the, the, the voting case, um, we, we don't have the best possible result, we just have something average. There are two good ones, uh, incrementing, so with uh, every additional person, we have something um, of a dis the same quality, but, but better. Uh, so uh, competition of tug of rope uh, is, is an example of one. Uh, we add some additional strength to, to, um, to the pull of, of the rope. Of the rope. Um, and emergence is something um, that is possibly the, the, the best uh, outcome, and it can occur, uh, for example, in the process of um, scientific discovery or building some new technology, space exploration. No single person in the group is able to perform as well as the group. So can we combine those two outcomes for our collective action in order to achieve uh, alignment in, in policy? I think this is possible because th there is much untapped potential in collective intelligence. Um, Every one of you have unique knowledge about your experiences, about the things that you are you value, um, about your maybe expertise, and um, this knowledge right now is uncoordinated. It, it is not function as efficiently as it can in order to help society solve its most most pressing issues, and we could um, use this knowledge to counter each other biases to add new information to the group and have the best decisions we are able to come up with. Let me give you an example from our work. So we were tasked to help reform uh, education policy in Poznań. This is not easy task because there are many worldviews, there are many ideas how to do this, there are uh, many conflicts of uh, interest, uh, there are many actors. So uh, how we can uh, combine their inputs, their, their knowledge, in order to have the, the best policy. Uh, so we invited representatives of stakeholders like teachers, students, their parents, uh, academic experts, uh, school officials, uh, representatives of NGO, and um, invited them to create an uh, argument map about those um, policy propositions. Argument mapping is something that um, uh, that is the, the, the key uh, idea behind our, our approach and software. But it, it doesn't require any software uh, if, if you want to do this for yourself. Uh, and I strongly encourage you to, to try, because uh, there are studies that uh, show that using argument mapping actively help increase the critical thinking skills of the user. Uh, so what is, um, how, how this process looks like, how, how we can achieve this, this outcome. We start with some thesis. Uh, so it might be a proposition of, of a new policy. And in our approach, we try to um, formulate it in a way that 
can be understood independently of the context of the discussion. So um, maybe another city want to use um, this, uh, this conclusion. So we, we need to formulate it in order to, to be extracted from the discussions um, without the, the, the um, constellation of other related theses. Um, right, so you, 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 as, you as a user, you, you just read the, the, the thesis and you can agree with it or disagree with it, right? So you, you give supports or uh, you can give counter arguments for it. Um, and in the level of the premise, so your explanation, why do you agree or disagree, you give your own thesis, right? So this is something that allows other to uh, address your thesis and give other arguments uh, and counter arguments. And uh, this, in, in this way, we just expand the, the knowledge map, the argument map uh, to the point that everybody is satisfied. They, they say everything they, they know and uh, they criticize everything that they are disagreeing with. So in this way, we are building collectively something that nobody is really um, in charge of, right? We're using our collective intelligence to do that. What are the other building blocks in this process? Uh, we can have, have conjunction. Conjunction is something that is um, quite useful for resolving conflicts because we not only uh, can state some additional claims about facts, about uh, future predictions and so on, but also we can use uh, the rules of reasoning we are using in order to explain why the premise supports conclusion. And this is important because oftentimes it is unstated in our everyday thinking, our everyday conversations, and th those theses are crucial in order to resolve conflicts. We have additional edges. Uh, maybe it is not important to go through all of them. We mostly use support and attacks. Um, but the important thing to remember is they are consistent no matter what is the level of the discussion. It may be very concrete object level or very abstract uh, meta-argumentation, so arguments about arguments or uh, some abstract et ethical uh, discussions. The edges, so the arrows, stay the same. And those can be used to address um, nodes, so the, the, the thesis, and relationships themselves. And uh, this type of structure can be translated to this one, so this is quite interesting to reveal hidden reasoning. Okay, um, what is the, uh, the structure of some uh, claim about what should be done, right? If we say that city of Poznan should do X. Uh, from analytical philosophy, we know that if something should be done, it must be possible, because we cannot uh, expect to be uh, Oblige, but something impossible, right? And uh, as well, it is it must be worth doing because otherwise, why we should do that, right? So uh, maybe it's interesting for effective altruists because uh, we have effectiveness discussion and this discussion about values, about altruism, and so on. So um, those can lead us to uh, explaining in depth why, what type of scenarios we can envision, what type of uh, empirical claims are needed to, to be proven. Um, what are the alternatives we, we envision? And what type of values we are basing our dec decision on, right? So um, quickly we can ask ourselves uh, questions, why would one think that particular thesis is, is right? And come up with some very abstract uh, philosophical answers. But those answers are really crucial in order to resolve conflicts and actually have alignment. And this is the result of the discussion. Um, I, I, I remind you that those are just people from different walks of life, right? Th those are not professional trained philosophers, but they were able to come up with many decisions in, in this policy. And we can say that they are aligned about this because um, th th they were given this result and they were able, even after the workshop, to, to continue expanding their criticism, their supports of, of any given premises, uh, to the point that they just didn't have any additional knowledge to, uh, to add. And um, maybe it's not obvious that this is decision, this is outcome, uh, but uh, every uh, single note in this, this graph uh, represents some micro decisions. Uh, some of them maybe are uh, more obvious. We, which, un, which one are the, the key decisions? 
but uh, we can calculate from the position of the thesis in the graph uh, what is the weight given by the other argumentation. And remember that in our approach, we have reusable argumentation, so argumentation from the outside the original context. So it's not only collective intelligence of this particular group, but uh, collective intelligence of every person who used uh, this, uh, this type of reasoning before. Yes? Uh, we, we calculate argument um, weight. So, so the, um, this is something um, that sh should, us tell, uh, sh should tell us something about what the decision is based th th this value here. Uh, so so uh, as an example, here we have some um, theses that have many supports. So it's probably um, more valuable th than some decision that, that has a lot of uh, attacks. Yeah. Uh, the, the structure of the graph de decides the, the weight. So um, if we have, for example, uh, some counter to counter, mm -hmm. then w this counter is, is not that uh, valuable, let's say. And given that um, we have uh, just one position for every thesis in the graph, um, it, it is not that easy to, to uh, spam arguments because those arguments just can have... Um, mm, the, it is not that, that, that easy to, to come up with that many arguments. Maybe those are valid arguments. We, we are not uh, looking into them uh, in detail. We're allowing collective intelligence to... If, if somebody sees this strategy, they can address it. So they, they can, for example, uh, transform single uh, premise to, to conjunction and uh, treat, it, treat all of the arguments, for example, uh, a single instance of, of something, single instance of something in the same category as just one argument. But I, I don't want to go to the detail. I, I, um, details, I, I can do this uh, in the questions. I will now uh, move to, to something mm, that may give you additional information for that. So um, we are trying to help users to formulate arguments uh, in, in, in a way that is most uh, useful for others. So, uh, for example, um, we are trying to, mm, to, to help them uh, connect the, the reasoning from the uh, past reasoning in order to, to not uh, spam arguments, uh, as mentioned before, and uh, to, to formulate them in a way that they could be understood outside of the original context. Right now, we, um, Additionally, we, we, we do have uh, integration with, with GPT in order to uh, produce automatically uh, some new arguments, maybe in, in some field that there is just no uh, information in our database currently. Uh, and what's interesting in this approach, that many object level discussion have um, very different knowledge bases, but there are some shared commonalities, especially abstract argumentation. So arguments about values, arguments about um, meta-level re reasoning, arguments that are used to evaluate other arguments. And this is very useful for conflict resolution, as, as I mentioned before. So um, is this something that produces alignment? I would say that um, it is, um, and it satisfies many, many criteria. Uh, first of all, we have sovereignty, so, so we are able to contribute to the discussion at any point uh, to the extent of our knowledge and interest. We uh, can improve those knowledge maps because um, with additional counter arguments uh, and meta uh, level argumentation, we have better, uh, better knowledge and argumentation to assess uh, quality of other arguments. Uh, this this uh, doesn't produ produce locked in values about any decision because any type of structure like this is open-ended. It can be improved upon with new knowledge, new uh, evaluations. Uh, and um, it helps coordination because the argumentation is anonymous. It is not connected to any particular actor. Nobody is deciding uh, for the group what the result is. 
the structure of the discussion and the um, validity of reasoning de deciding that. Uh, and it, it is scalable because, uh, as I mentioned, we can have many uh, parallel discussions that are interconnected um, because of the reusage of, of previous reasoning when we um, approach the same arguments from the past and the same thesis from the past. And with um, argumentation, we have explainable reasoning basically for free. So we are able to examine what was the reasoning that led to particular decision. So um, to use it for AI alignment, it must also not only produce this human level alignment, but also uh, increase capabilities. Because if, you, uh, if it would uh, decrease the capabilities of AI, uh, it, um, it would be discarded probably by the model in the future. But um, the, the structured knowledge with consistent meta-level reasoning is something that most of large language model right now is lacking. They're, they're not very good at this, this type of reasoning. And that's not uh, surprising because this type of reasoning is oftentimes unstated. Th there is a lack of this type of reasoning in the, in the uh, databases uh, found on the internet. Uh, even in uh, approaches like constitutional AI by, by Anthropic. Um, the uh, ethical texts, uh, constitutional texts, oftentimes just stop thinking, stop reasoning at some point and maybe claim that those truths are, uh, uh, we hold to be self-evident or something like that. But we actually need to reason about them in order to resolve conflict to see why we derive with some uh, outcomes, some values. Step-by-step uh, -step reasoning is something that uh, improves performance of LLMs as well. And this is basically something that it is embodied in this structure. Um, checking for fallacies, uh, it is much easier in, in this type of graph because our meta argumentation, so arguments about arguments, are the part of the structure and we have predefined structures that can be reused in, in this way. Uh, deliberation, uh, it, it is very interesting how right now um, they're agentic systems that, that converse with each other and produce better results. And this is basically something that allows for scalable conversation with collective intelligence. And uh, we have weighted theses. Yeah, so this is something that can give inputs, the signal for the reinforcement, um, for the reinforcement signal for, for models to, to learn. So they will learn uh, based on the deep reasoning structures that help to resolve conflicts uh, that are very much needed in, in alignment process. Uh, so in the case in which we don't have some, some type of knowledge generated in, in the database, in the, our knowledge base, we can use additional agents. So we are experimenting with, with those. Uh, we can use uh, researchers, so uh, model that is designed for, for argument mining to produce new uh, arguments. Uncover of hidden premises, that is working title <laughs> still. Um, so uh, we can um, extract what type of uh, um, premises are needed in order to even have um, how to move from premise to the conclusion. And argument evaluator, uh, the agent that tries to connect with the previous re reasoning and maybe uh, see if we have overlap with some previous uh, argumentation. And basically re resolve those type of issues you, you mentioned before. The, the, what, what if somebody is spamming argumentation? We can use AI models in order to connect those into the one uh, reasoning. And uh, it, it is reusable, so re the evaluations are reusable too. So we don't really have to make the same mistake twice. So uh, we can use it for um, much better verification than um, approaches like reinforcement learning based on human feedback because we have transparent reasoning. We don't just have human opinions, we do have reasoning that can be validated by, by many people at the same time. Uh, we, we don't have biases of single person that are then transcribed to the model um, because those biases can be removed on the level of, of argumentation in, in natural language. And uh, with a combination of AI agents and, and human collective intelligence, we can produce better and better knowledge to give reinforcement signal to those uh, models in order to make them more aligned with this, this type of uh, reasoning and uh, resolving conflicts. So, um, yeah, th those are the things that we are still working on. Uh, we, we need to have uh, correct assisted uh, notation, uh, notation of, of the graph, correct weighting, correct merger of previous reasoning, and 
um, we have to protect ourselves from bad faith arguments and vandalism. Uh, so that, that is all. Thank you very much for, for listening. Uh, I'll very much uh, um, implore you to um, contact me and if you want to test this system, uh, please write me an email. Uh, I can give you access to it. And uh, I would like to add that, you know, this is a very challenging task. Uh, we are not able to do this alone. So if you have some you know, project in mind, you want to test this approach and you, you, you can see how you can collaborate with us, please uh, let us know because it, it, this is something that you know, future of humanity depends on. So maybe just uh, we are mistaken in some part, just let us know, we, we will focus our attention somewhere else. But if you are right, you know, maybe we, we, we will actually be agents of, uh, of change in the process of, of aligning humanity with, uh, with AI and with each other. Thank you. So, any questions? Okay, so um, you said that you're calculating those weights based on the graph. So, I understand, uh, well, the first question would be, is this uh, the algorithm that you're using to attach this weight based on the graph, is this like the only possible algorithm to do that? No. <laughs> this is just first version, we are experimenting with it and we will calibrate it. The, so, uh, there is a question, what, what about, um, Gödel's type of uh, problem, so self-referentiality, how we can attribute weight to the uh, thesis that uh, argumentation, for example, can be resolved, uh, can resolve uh, um, problems about arguments, right? So, so self-referential type of reasoning. If you're arguing that, yes, you, you can use argumentation to resolve those type of pro problems, you're using arguments, so you are basically cheating. But you are arguing that you, you cannot do this, you're using argumentation to, right, you know, to, to uh, resolve this issue. So there are some type of uh, sentences that cannot be uh, properly ascribed. So we, we are trying to, to set up some uh, system to, you know, just treat it as an axioms or something like that. But other, um, other reasoning is, is um, based on an uh, approach that it is open-ended reasoning. So we still can extract some new information. So we, we can still have some new premises, still have, have some new counter arguments. Uh, so in, in this sense, it narrows down the possible ways of calculating the weights because it um, f the counter uh, uh, factual way to, to calculate it would be okay we have we finished our discussion and then we calculate something but th this would produce different results right so th there are some ways to navigate possible spaces of, of calculating the thesis uh, the thesis weight but uh, it, it is not um, obvious which one to choose so we are still trying to to calibrate it and probably we will st still work on it Uh, I am saying that I, I finished my time, so thank you very much, and <laughs> uh, I, I will be somewhere.